Jeremy Monroe is a database administrator at the Smithsonian National Museum of African Art. He's deeply passionate about social justice and the way it's expressed in museums and all sorts of things, including civic infrastructure. Ask him also about his vines, if you're interested, uh, his favorite vines, if you end up catching up with them. This is his second Ignite at MCN, and I'm really excited for Jeremy to join us today. Take it away, Jeremy. Howdy, so here's some uh, speculative MCN presentations of the future. 2050, digital strategy when the state is underwater. 2075, securing digital resources in a rare earth metal shortage. 2100, dive us now, a case for protecting the global south from aggressive rare earth extraction. Um, and so how do we get here, right? Neoliberal era, the individual is responsible for solving all problems. Thus, we all have physical and mental isolation. And technology exacerbated this. Uh, so I'm gonna pop a LaCroix, happy 3 of p.m. Uh, so this turn, it relies on what Mark Fisher calls capitalist realism. Capitalism makes it impossible to imagine any other way in the world to organize than it is now. Um, and that, you know, we have the winning out of uh, Western values, need to classify and systemize everything, and Western enlightenment as this kind of form of cultural hegemony. Um, and, you know, we, we all know most museums fail to meaningfully address a bunch of this stuff here. Um, and, you know, they're absolutely sure is this feeling that things are going to get worse before they get better, uh, which, you know, is very frustrating to li live with. But I want to all articulate a, an ideal future for everybody um, that looks a little bit more hopeful, um, even though we might have to live through some bad stuff first. Uh, I feel like the slide's not incrementing there, Nikhil. Uh, so what is the Museum of 3021 in digital? Well, let's get some common ground. So technology can be useful for museums. It can also do harm. And many museums pursue technology for its own sake or to appear relevant. I think this is all stuff that we can all pretty much safely agree on. Um, so the lens I'm using is solar punk, which is sci-fi that assumes humanity solves the climate problems it faces today. And technology is something to be used only when it is of mutually agreed upon benefit. And it's focused on global justice, not just green living for those who can afford it. Um, so why do visions of the future always look like the present, but with the material issues with how we live removed? So like, for example, cars are fine. We just need electric vehicles and green energy. The museum just needs a little startup culture, a little Silicon Valley, rather than something truly radical and transformative. And like, no one knows what technology is going to be like 50 years from now, let alone a thousand. And technology connects, but it also isolates. For example, the proliferation of smartphones is, is connection, but the platforms on them isolate us. Um, and particularly proliferation of smartphones in the global south is good. Um, so like big machine learning networks re require big data centers. These are huge carbon emissions. There's a potential benefit versus damage. What work is automated because we lack staff resources versus what work can only be done that way? And if so, is that work truly necessary? And you know, we're running out of rare earth metals. The mining conditions of the global south are coming as humanity. Tesla batteries, not good. Um, and if power generation is green, um, you know, even if power generation is green, rare earth metals and carbon production is a huge problem. And like, um, so as digital professionals, I think our new task isn't to be evangelists for every tech, but instead to be in the technological vanguard running defense um, about people who care about profit over damage. And technology is a means, not an end. Like if you take away anything from today, take away that it's a means, not an end. So often we do not choose technology or our built environment. They're chosen for us, right? Um, these technologies are sold on a threat that you, the worker or the consumer, be obsolescent or left behind. And it, remember, society is built to tell us what we desire. Um, and so it's courageous, I think, to say that we don't want toxic startup culture, right? And, and we should resist extractive technologies. So we all agree physical extractive resource stuff, bad, but like also there's extraction of our data, surveillance, and extraction of our time or attention. And like, lest you call me a Luddite, you know, the Luddites destroyed machinery that was destroying their jobs. It was destroying their ability to like make money and be in the world. And, you know, I think Silicon Valley big shots, they don't allow their kids to use screens or social media. So that really is illustrative about what's going on here. And so like, you know, which is it, right? A hundred companies represent 71% of global emissions or our choices are why companies pollute. Are our jobs just bad? Or is it purely uh, your fault? You can't handle the workload, right? You know, and I, these, these are binaries and binaries are bad. Moralizing your choices is bad. Don't do it. Uh, work won't love you back. Um, and self-care is about making yourself ready to stand on the barricades, not just endurance. And you, uh, regulation is a great way to solve climate issues. Uh, big regulation guy. Um, 
So what is Mesema 3021? I don't know. Sorry. I spent like hours on this presentation and I'm more interested in what it isn't and like what the ideal world can teach us. And that's just sci-fi, baby. I don't need to have a whole political program. And you know, hey, uh, we, all, we can take solace. Even when the world is underwater, we'll still be having presentations where somebody did one shiny digital project once and people will call it digital strategy. And, uh, you know, at least we have that eternal, awful thing to look forward to. <laughs> one day, the long fought battle between humanity and the forces of greed and division will end. And on that day, finally free, we will throw a motherfucking party. I look forward to seeing you there. Um, and now some credits. Uh, this has been a Museum Meme Union Local 4 2069 approved presentation. The memes can be outside our art. You can tell my museum about this. I sold out. Last year I lied. You should log off. And this MCN Ignite presented by Sherman Meme Gang. If you don't know what that is, you should just go to my Twitter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. For kicking us off, Jeremy. Oh my God, so great. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit of what the next hour, the next 45 minutes is going to be like. I'm so excited to be here with you all.